Hey everybody, it's Renee at Tailspin Farm again, and before I get too deep into my weekly videos here, I wanted to um, actually show you my rabbits and what I'm talking about when I talk about spinning Angora and the products that we make here. Um, there are four recognized breeds of rabbits um, by the American Rabbit Breeder Association, and those are Satin, um, Giant, English, and French. And I only raise English and French. I have had um, I had a giant German cross once, and I had a French giant cross once, um, but I haven't had any since, and I never really got into breeding them, um, and so the only ones I raise here are the French and the English, and I wanted to show you the differences of those um, and get into a little bit of the dynamics of them. I am not a show person at, at all. The only shows we've ever done have been, the kids have done 4-H shows um, with their rabbits, but other than that, I am not the right person to ask show questions for. I strictly raise them to, to breed them for fiber. I do sell my rabbits, um, and most of mine are pedigreed, so I have the lineage of the rabbit back three or four generations for most of them. Um, and I have some that don't have pedigree, but again, all I raise mine for are strictly um, the fiber from them. Um, the satin um, is the least popular that I know of here in Michigan where we're at. Um, those ones are the smaller breed. From what I read about them, they get matted quite easily. They do have a beautiful sheen to them, which the word satin comes from. Um, and so those ones I know the least amount about. Um, the giant angoras are huge angoras. Those can get anywhere from, uh, what did I find? 12 pounds and up, 12 to 20 pounds is what they say. Um, the giant and the German are the ones that cannot be combed. Um, they have to be sheared. And they give you the most bang for your buck when it comes to fiber. Um, I'm actually in the process of looking for um, either Giant or German, whatever I can find here that I can get my hands on. I would like to get a couple to start breeding them because, again, I am a hand spinner in my yarn. I sell it um, as I spin it, and so I'm always looking for more production in that. Um, so those are the two biggest ones. The English ones are the smaller of between the English and the French. Um, the English get to be anywhere from five to seven pounds. Um, and they are fully covered. The English have, um, you're gonna see here in a second, but they are fully covered in fiber everywhere. Um, they, the French are clean face rabbits, the English are not. And the English, between the English and the French, um, the French is much easier to care for. It gets matted less and it has to do with the guard hairs that they have underneath. So I'm going to show you two of my rabbits today. I brought in two and they are going to get groomed when we're done here. So I wanted you to be able to see um, full, full on rabbit. So this is Dax and he is an English Angora and you can see his face is loaded. Um, it is hard to see his eyes, but they are in there somewhere. Um, his color, even though his, his body is gray, he would be considered a black rabbit because of his face is black. Um, and that's how they do the, the color categories. Again, I haven't done show very much at all beyond 4-H for my kids. And so there's a whole nother um, breeding for color and things like that. Um, that you can get into. Uh, Bumblebee's, Bumblebee Acres um, has a really good genetics and color part on their website. Um, I think it's just bumblebeeacres.com and they give color variations and there are, um, and I think they only do English on that color variation. The French kind of go along with the same color patterns, but um, they go through all of the different colors. There is a lilac rabbit. There's blue. We've had blue rabbits. And when you look at blue rabbits, you can literally see a blue color to them. Same with the lilac. You can see um, something about them, the, the tips or whatever. They almost look like a lilac color. So that's, that's a good way to do it is do research on them. Um, again, the English are the smaller 
um, and actually this is just a lot of fur back here. So he weighs probably six pounds. Um, and Dax has been with us for, um, I think Dax is almost five years old now. So he's been with us for a while and his fur, um, some of my English don't mat as much. Some of them do mat and, and it gets around their face where they really get matty, where they get so much hair here. Um, and so that is what an English Angora looks like. Um, and again, there's his little eyes, but you really have to look for them. Now, my French Angoras, um, and let me grab Matilda here. She also is in full coat and will be cleaned, um, groomed today. And these guys, I can take a comb, and I'll do a video on that again. I've done one before, but I'll do another video on how I groom my rabbits. Um, no, we do not have to kill our rabbits to groom them. We comb them. Um, as you can see, uh, angoras are really docile animals, um, and they just kind of sit. And I'll, I'll do a video here in a couple weeks on how I groom my rabbits. Um, but this is a French angora. So you can see her face is much more clean. Um, she would also be categorized as a black rabbit. Um, but really, to see them side by side, the only thing you're going to notice different is their face. Um, she has a clean face. Um, and that's the, the biggest variance. Um, her fiber is, she has more, and I can see it, you probably can't, but she has more guard hairs, and I can see that in her fiber coming through. So again, even though she is considered um, a black colored rabbit, her, her guard hair, or her underneath fiber is quite light. Um, and then as you get out further, you can see a lot of the guard hairs come out in her. So that's the main difference um, between them. And so if you have any more questions, you can just message me. Um, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, on Tailspin Farm. And hopefully next week I'll bring you a video on how to groom your rabbits. Talk to you soon.